Hey friends, let me set the scene for this video. It's back in March 2018, around the 22nd. I'm in Monroe, Louisiana because I'm on a cross country road tripping tour with my family. I look like I belong in Louisiana and I talk about how ray tracing was just announced from Microsoft with their DXR implementation on DirectX 12 and how Nvidia is gonna be joining up on RTX and AMD has announced Radeon Rays 2.0. There's much fanfare, a lot of excitement, ray tracing, finally realistic looking graphics in video games just like the movies and we can actually appreciate something that we've been missing for so long real-time ray tracing fast forward August 20th 2018 Nvidia is about to make the announcement of the year that we are getting brand new graphics cards from them the 2080 Ti the 2080 and the 2070 all with the variant called RTX standing for the ray tracing technology it's going to be amazing except they jacked up the price. Now we have to pay $1,200 for a TI card, we have to pay $800 for a regular 80 series, and now we have to pay $600 for a 70 series, and not to mention the 350 for a 60 class. Nvidia dashes our hopes for what ray tracing could be, and not to mention that the only game we have it in is Battlefield 5, which, I mean, given our video where we had a hard time telling them whether or not it was on, it kind of indicates that maybe the fanfare is gone. But, my friends, there is hope. Obviously, we just had the announcement from AMD about the Radeon 7 graphics card, and it looks to be Vega Series Edition 2, where we're getting the same limited amount of stock, we're getting the same crazy pricing, we're getting the same features that nobody asked for in a gaming card, like one terabyte per second memory bandwidth, but what we did get was some interviews with Lisa Sue afterwards about, hey, Where's ray tracing? What you gonna be doing there? We kinda want ray tracing. And she did not disappoint. But before we talk about all of what we have to expect from AMD with ray tracing, I need to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our very own UFD Deals website, my friends. If you're looking to save money on computer parts around the internet, check out UFD Deals. We compile all of the hottest deals from everywhere you can find, and we link them there. You click the link, it gives us an affiliate kickback. You save money, it's an amazing thing. UFD Deals, link in the video description. Check it out if you're looking to save money, because saving money is not really what's gonna be happening with RTX cards or ray tracing. But let's talk about AMD because they're the ones who maybe have the hope for us here. So in separate interviews with Tom's Hardware and PC World, Lisa Su went on to talk about their plans for ray tracing. It's obvious that it's not being implemented in any sort of hardware capacity with the upcoming Vega 7 graphics card, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening at all. So she said in her PC World interview that the consumer doesn't see a lot of benefit today because other parts of the ecosystem are not ready when talking about ray tracing. And she said that AMD is deep in development of their own ray tracing technology and that it's going to be concurrent with both hardware and software. So we have confirmation AMD is going to support ray tracing in a way that we've been wanting for quite some time. But I'll talk about more about how their implementation works in just a little bit. But we have hardware confirmation from her. But then in her Tom's Hardware article, she said that we should hear about AMD's plans as we go through the years, suggesting that ray tracing hardware might be revealed by AMD a lot sooner than expected. It's clear that Vega was built with no idea of ever putting ray tracing into the hardware side of things, but that doesn't mean that AMD hasn't been thinking about ray tracing all along. In fact, if we go back to June 21st, 2016, you'll see that there's a video on AMD's YouTube page called GPU Open Radeon Rays. It's a Vulkan implementation of using ray tracing on graphics cards. So it's something that AMD has had in the pipeline for a while, but back when Microsoft announced DXR in March of 2018, AMD also came out talking about Radeon Rays 2.0, which is the new implementation of their Radeon Rays support, which, as I mentioned, is run on Vulkan, whereas the current DXR is based on DirectX 12. Obviously, there aren't that many games that support Vulkan out there. However, it does mean that it's more of an open standard and hopefully we could get a lot of companies to adopt it if they ever wanted to. But considering Vulkan adoption rates have been uh, kind of pathetic, even compared to DX12 adoption rates, we're, I'm not so sure I have a lot of hope for uh, the fact that AMD making it open is going to be something that's going to create incentive for us getting Radeon tracing. Ray, Ray, Radeon tracing. Ray, Dion. 
R-A-Y Dion, Radion. Why did they call it Radion Rays? They could have called it Radion. So both of those are from quite a while ago. It's clear that AMD has had their finger on the pulse of providing ray tracing. The original Radion Rays wasn't meant for video games. It was meant for professional developers in which they were making content that actually had to have lifelike lighting into it, as one with professional cards would do. However, AMD also said that they had expected that they might even see ray tracing come to games in 2019 where you'd be able to implement it. Obviously that didn't happen, but this is back in March of last year where we were also expecting Metro Exodus to be the first game that supported RTX to come out in 2018. Lo and behold, it's actually launching in this year, 2019. However, in an interview with Golem.de, AMD talked about how they actually think that this is not just going to be for professional workloads, but that this will actually be something that's implemented in games, both through Radeon Rays on the software side, but then with parallel computing on the hardware side with new graphic card technology. And they said already in the next few months, it can be expected that players with very powerful computers in the graphics menu under Ultra could tick a box with ray tracing. So with regards to consoles, it, even though AMD is the one who provides them with the hardware, the situation is still unque unclear. And on inquiries of golem.de on the topic, AMD did not want to answer because for it, the platform operators are responsible. However, we did a hot news episode last week talking about how Polyphony Digital, they're working on implementing ray tracing into a Gran Turismo demo, which could come out in their next version of the game. Hopefully it's a little bit better than sport and not online only because that sucked. Anyways, there's a lot of hints that there is hardware implementation coming along the way. Why would Polyphony Digital spend the time working on ray tracing if the hardware that they're planning on making this game for, i.e. the PlayStation 5, doesn't have hardware support for ray tracing because the software implementation of it is way too slow. That's why it was so impressive to see it done by NVIDIA with the four Tesla cards running that infamous Star Wars demo where everything was done in real time. There's real time ray tracing done by graphics cards. But what was done by four Volta cards back then is now done by a single RTX 2080 Ti thanks to its implementation of ray tracing cores, not just the tensor cores that were used for denoising the ray tracing. So it's clear if AMD wants to have any success in actually implementing ray tracing, which to be fair, even though our testing of it where we tried to see if we could tell if it was on or off, kind of makes it seem like a gimmick, it's honestly the next step that we need to take in order to have better looking games. Obviously, textures and all that need to be improved as well, but realistic lighting is something that we should all be wanting in our video games. It's not something that we should be spending a whole heck of a lot of extra money on right now because it's not implemented, but we do want AMD to come out with their own solution. We do want NVIDIA to continue to develop and make ray tracing cores and tensor cores even better to make the situation a much more appreciable one. Because even though right now it's hard to tell whether or not it's on or off, I guarantee you in a couple generations when this is actually worked out, it's going to be something that is just baked in and you know it's there and it looks good when it's on and it looks bad when it's off. So even though AMD didn't announce Navi at CES like we were expecting them to, we got Radeon 7, which is a heap of something else. It's not a compute card because it doesn't have FP64 because it's been confirmed that it doesn't and it doesn't have double the ROPs like some people were saying it does and it has one terabyte memory bandwidth which is great but who actually needs that? Who needs 16 gigabytes of HBM2? Who needs one terabyte per second of memory bandwidth? Not a whole heck of a lot of people. And the fact that it doesn't make it faster than an RTX 2080 Ti kind of shows that the limit of the card isn't on how much VRAM it has. It has to do with the actual core, which Vega still disappointing. But if we take rumors of information that Raja Kadori had his team that was building Vega work on Navi instead, it could be that since AMD has been working so hard on Navi for such a long time that we are going to get some sort of implementation in Navi that we haven't seen before from AMD, either by the ways of ray tracing, or there's still continued rumors about the fact that they will have multiple GPU dies that work across Infinity Fabric, and they could just add on a few chips like ray tracing cores, because there are companies out there who make dedicated ray tracing chips. It could be something that's just additionally slapped on at the end of the process, and then it works with the GPU core 
in tandem and then it's a parallel processing that's happening at the same time but not on the actual navi die it's its own ray tracing dedicated core just like rt cores but amd might not have to come up with their own they could partner with somebody like power vr and implement it that way but for now the speculation is gone amd is working on hardware implementations of ray tracing this is something that i think us as consumers want to push even though we might be disappointed with how it is right now it would still be good for us to continue to encourage NVIDIA and AMD to spend money to pouring into game developers to implement this in video games. Hopefully AMD with their open source one on Vulkan, you know, that might be the better one to push instead of GimpWorks and NVIDIA and all they're trying to do there. But it's exciting times. Ray tracing coming to an AMD card, hopefully later this year, hopefully with the Navi announcement that we're expecting maybe at Computex or potentially even SIGGRAPH because I think that's where they unveiled Vega. I believe they unveiled Vega more at SIGGRAPH of 2017, so, or 2016. What year is it? Anyways, so hopefully, Towards the end of the year, we'll get more information on this, but I'm kind of excited. AMD bringing ray tracing to their upcoming graphics cards. It's it's gonna be a good thing, even if ray tracing isn't where we need it to be right now. You're paying for the beta version so that as an early adopter, you're paving the way so that the masses can experience it. And let me know, what do you think of AMD ray tracing? What do you think of NVIDIA ray tracing? Do you think it's worth the extra cost? I personally don't. I think if they would have kept the pricing in line with the previous generation, the adoption rate would have been a lot higher and the public reception would have also been more positive. Just let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out UFD deals if you want to save money on whatever you're buying whether it be rx 590s or our tx 2060s whatever i don't care would you spend your money the way you want to spend it check it out at ufd deals don't forget that you can support us directly by going to our patreon patreon.com forward slash ufd tech in case you want to uh support us there we try to upload all of our videos early there and without ads so if either one of those things sounds enticing to you check out our patreon Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.